It's been a good morning, good week this week. Uh, very busy couple weekends. Last weekend, a lot of us were out at uh, Alberta Beach for a wonderful weekend of camp. Um, during camp, there was some exciting news and wonderful news. And uh, if you're not aware, uh, Jeff proposed this last weekend to Winnie. And so we have a wedding coming in this next year. So let's praise God for that. And then we had then the weekend got got through, and we we went on to oh what day was that Tuesday, Tuesday, yeah uh, Tuesday morning. I took Lena to the hospital for a checkup because they were they wanted to do an ultrasound and a stress test, and she happened to be already starting uh, with contra- contractions. So so we stayed at the hospital for most of that day and she stayed all night and so did Ryan and then the next day at 7.51 ish uh, so 36 hours after I took her to the hospital initially um, Declan was here and Declan is nine pounds one ounces one ounce rather and 23 inches long he's a big boy and so we can praise God for for God providing a healthy child to, to them as well this morning so and uh, he's here on the first, his, he's four years, four days old, I guess. And he's at, he's at, where is he? At church. Isn't that awesome? One of the things I wanted to talk, we're going to talk about this morning is worship. And worship is, a, is an amazing part of what we do as a church. I mean, it's one of the pillars of what we do at church. Over the last few weeks, we, we, we spent some time talking about what worship is not. I want us to really focus today on what worship is. And one of the things I was just sitting here or standing at the back and watching uh, as we worship, one of the best things in the world to see is children in worship. Dorothy gets to, uh, does lots with the preschoolers. She gets to see how they are. And, and uh, um, I love watching the preschoolers in worship. You watch Tamar. You watch, watch uh, um, Caden or uh, Audrey. And not Declan yet, not quite yet anyways. But you see these little guys in worship and they're dancing and they're into the music and they're, 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 they, they hear and feel the music and they're worshipping. Littlest as they are, they're worshipping. Caden is already worshipping. He has a sense of what God is doing around him and he's worshipping. Then we see us. <laughs> and sometimes we're not so worshipful, right? But, we're, but when we read the passage of Scripture this morning in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, we're, just to remind you what it said there, it said, Therefore, brothers, and we'll say sisters as well, be by the mercy of God, I urge you to present your bodies as living sacrifices, a living, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this, to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Worship. That's what that's talking about. Spiritual worship is what God desires from us. And that's what we're going to try to focus on this morning is what spiritual worship is. It happens when we present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Now, what is a sacrifice? A sacrifice, if you look up in, 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 uh, in a dictionary, is, is, a, is a giving of something, of the offering of something, of total, uh, of giving of, the, of your best. When you looked at the sacrifice in the Old Testament, when the people of Israel brought a sacrifice to the temple, whether it was a bird or another larger animal or, or whatever it might have been, as big as a bull, they, when they brought that sacrifice to the temple, it wasn't the least of their of the of those possessions it was the best they even brought grain they brought wine they brought all these different things it was the best the best of all they had so a living sacrifice when we, when the scripture here in, in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says present yourself as a living sacrifice we're presenting our best of who we are this is our spiritual worship It's presenting the best of who we are, the best of what we can do, the best of of how we can play maybe music, the best of how we might sing, the best of of what we are. One of the reasons that when uh, you think about worship and when you think about, well, when I was little, we had to wear our best. We we talked about our Sunday best, right? Wearing your Sunday best. That meant that whatever clothes you had, no, no matter what it might have been, you took on Sunday and you put on your best for God because you're going into God's temple 
You're going to, the, to worship in the sanctuary. You're going to a worship service that was to focus on who God was and, and you wanted to come into His presence and into, into, the te- into His sanctuary, into his, his church in your best. Now, our best at that time, now everybody at that time, you would, you would see, you know, Bernard, I think you're the, only, you're the only one with a tie. Oh, no, Lincoln has a tie on this morning too. But, but a tie or a suit jacket, that at one time was what everybody wore. Now, if I ask for a show of hands, how many of you own a suit? Most of us don't own suits anymore, and, and so that we, we might wear our best. It might be something different, right? But, but it's presenting ourselves our, our, a living sacrifice. It's giving our best. Now, clothes are not what I'm, we're talking about this morning. If you came and you put on your best, and your best was whatever it might be, I'm not worried about that this morning. I'm not focusing on your clothes this morning. I don't want you to even go down that road. What I want us to focus on is giving of ourselves, our best, our spiritual sacrifice, our spiritual worship. In John chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 24, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. And he tells her there in verse 24, he says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. In that passage of scripture, there, what is happening is, is, is the woman at the well asked Jesus the question, why do you worship in Jerusalem, but ought we worship here in, in Samaria? And Jesus' answer is this, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So how do we do this? How do we accomplish this spiritual worship? In the Psalms, we're given a hint as to what spiritual worship is. We're going to flip through a few Psalms this morning. And so if you have your Bible with you, or if you have your, your iPad or iPhone with you, and you want to jump to, with them and be prepared, we're going to move uh, quickly through some passages of Scripture that help us to understand exactly what Rome, in Romans what Paul was telling them, that spiritual worship. And in what Jesus is saying to the woman at the well, that spirit, worshiping in spirit and in truth. And in the first psalm that we're going to look at this morning is found in Psalm, we're going to look at Psalm 48, verse 9. One verse of that, of that psalm. It says, God, within your temple, we contemplate your faithful love. The people of Israel understood that when they came into the presence of God, when they came into his temple, when they came to worship in the sanctuary, they came to contemplate who he was to them, his faithful love to them. Oh, the history they had, right? God had taken them from out of the land of Egypt and taken them through the wilderness and taken them to the promised land, that, that land of milk and honey. And he showed them how he would, take, how he would care for them by, by conquering those nations, by taking the land and without any issue, without any problem, as long as they watched and followed after him. They contemplated his faithful love. They knew who he was. We contemplate or meditate on, on, on the faithfulness of God. How much of our worship, though, is our mind meditating on the faithfulness of God this morning? As you came in this morning, how much was your mind meditating on the faithfulness or the love of God? As you sat down in, in your place, that, and you, most of you are in the same place every Sunday. You pick the same spot every Sunday to sit in, your, in the pew. How much was your mind on the faithfulness and the love of God for you? I know where mine, my, my mind was. I was waiting at the back. Uh, you know, and I, I love greeting people as they come in. But this morning, my mind was on Declan. I couldn't wait to see Declan come through the back door this morning. His mom and dad, it was nice to see them, but I really wanted to see Declan this morning. I couldn't wait to see him come and be in God's house on the first week of his life and to experience worship in the house of God. So my mind was on him. It wasn't where I think it should be. And in this passage of Scripture, I think when we come into this place of worship, when we come into any place of worship, when we come into the presence of God, our mind should be on his faithfulness. And his faithful love. But how much do we think about how tired we are because we stayed up till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning playing or wa- on, the, on the computer or watching TV or playing a video game or whatever it might be. Or maybe your mind is already on what time is this service going to be over and when is lunch. And I wonder what's going to be down in the coffee, in the gym for coffee. Is there going to be anything good to eat down there? 
Is your mind meditating on the faithfulness and the faithful love of God? How often do we come here with acute realization of how God loves us even when we fail? If I were to ask for a show of hands this week, how many of us know that we didn't do everything perfect this week? I'm sure all of us probably could put our hands up, right? If I asked, how many of us know that we disappointed God? I would ask, I'm not going to ask for that hand. <laughs> yeah, Chester's like, just keep holding down, Pastor. <laughs> we, we all know that we didn't do things perfect this week. Maybe it was just a thought that went through our mind about somebody else. Maybe it was some, a piece of gossip that we shared with somebody else. Maybe it was backbiting. Maybe it was just whatever it might have been. But you know, when we come into this place, we can contemplate on the faithful love of God. Because yet, while we still are sinners, while we still fail, and while we still have times of, of doubt, while we have still have times of struggle, God's faithful love is always there. Isn't that amazing? As you consider your week, and as you consider how your week went, God's faithful love never, never shook ever once at all. As we come into this place of worship, worship it should be obvious that our, that our God loves us. Even while we were yet sinners, God, our God loved us. As we come into this place of worship, this should be the very, in the very forefront of our mind. God loves you. He always, has always loves you and will always love you. First Corinthians, First Chronicles, rather, chapter sixteen, verse thirty-four through thirty-six. We read this: Give thanks to the Lord for his, for He is good; His faithful love endures forever. And say, save us, God of our salvation, gather us and rescue us from the nations, so that we may give thanks to your holy name and rejoice in your praise. May Yahweh, the God of Israel, be praised from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Hear that first verse. God, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His love, faithful love endures forever. Once more, we have come to the understanding, of, once we have come to the understanding of who Christ is, our spiritual worship will become more fulfilling, more real, more filling, fulfilling. But we go on, and another, another aspect of spiritual worship is found in Psalm, Psalm 100. In verse 1, it, re it reads, Shout triumphantly to the Lord of all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joy, joyful songs. Acknowledge Yahweh as God. He made us, and we are His. His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gate with thanksgiving. And his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For Yahweh is good and his love is eternal. His faithfulness endures through all generations. Verse 2, we go back up there. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. As we look at the children as they sing, as they dance in, in, in worship, we can see the joy of their service to God. At one time, we called this a worship service. Over time, it shortened it to we call it worship. When I was younger, we said we were going to Sunday service. But when we come into this place for spiritual worship, it should include the word service. We come to serve the Lord in worship. Our service includes singing joyfully and with glad hearts. But we often don't sound that way, do we? Let our songs raise the roof. Let our praises lift the heart of those in sadness. Let our, our, our singing inspire joy. When we come into here and we come before God and lift our voices in praise to Him and serve Him in gladness, Sunday should not be the, the hardest time of the week. It should be the best time of the week. On, Sunday, on, on Monday morning or Tuesday morning or, or Wednesday morning as you get up and go to school or go to work, those are the tough days. Sunday should be the day we get up and go, we're going into the house of God to serve the Lord our God who loves us forever. Who, his love is endless. Who cares for us and, and, and walks with us no matter where we, have, we fail. His love endures forever. Serve the Lord with gladness. Enter His courts with praise. Come before Him with singing. 
It was an old hymn we used to sing. And I remember sometimes even giving, and when I was leading the worship time, and I would, I would sing, we would get up and sing that hymn, and we'd see people, and it was just like, it, was, it didn't look like serve the Lord with gladness. It looked like serve the Lord with, 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 with oh, with contempt, with, with uh, no desire, no joy in our hearts. When we come in here, if there's someone that's here, that's sitting beside us, that's having a tough week, our singing and our, 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 our voices should, should inspire them. For it tells us, as we sing, it sings of songs of praise to who God is. It shouldn't be a tough time. In verse 3, again, we read there, it says, it says, Acknowledge Yahweh as God. He made us and we are His, His people, the sheep of His pasture. Spiritual worship acknowledges that God is the one true God. It leaves no question in our mind. It acknowledges that we are His children. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9, we read this. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercies, He has given us, us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into, into an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorruptible, and unfading, kept in, in heaven for you. You are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have been, you, you've had struggle in various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold, which perishes through, refine, through refined, though refined by fire, rather, may re result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You love Him, Though you have not seen him, and though not seeing him, you, now you believe in him and rejoice in the inexpressible glory and, and glorious joy, because you have, are rece receiving the goal, the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. God has brought salvation into this place. God has offered salvation to you. Although he has created you, he's also recreated those who have come to salvation in him. We are born again, new creatures. We have new, a new uh, lease on life. No longer do we need to worry about, about sin and sadness and, and the end of the, what happens at the end of the world. For now, when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, when we come and we're reborn into Him, recreated, we can come before Him and sing the praises of our, our Lord because of what He's done in us. We can look around at the world around us and see marvelous creations. If you have a chance to ever go climb a mountain uh, like Alexander and I did this last spring and go and see the, the beauty of his creation, how he has taken his hands and formed the mountains, how he has created the beauty of, of the trees, how you can sit in the, on the top of a mountain and hear the, the beauty of, of God's birds singing to him. Or even the stillness. And look around you at the mountains around you and see his creation. You can, how can you not but celebrate and, and praise his name? But when you consider what he's done in our lives, our praise, our spiritual worship, our living sacrifice should be that we can come before him with a heart ready to serve, ready to proclaim who he is with no apprehension, with no thought of what's going on in the world around us. God has brought salvation to each of us who have received him as his son as Savior. When we come into this place, our mouths should acknowledge the God who through his son has made us his own. One of the sheep of his pastures. It is because of all that he has done for you and I, our spiritual worship leads to verse 4 of this passage. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Spiritual worship is full of praise because of who He is. Who He is in you. Who He is in me. Who He is in all who call on His name. Spiritual worship is full of thanksgiving, thanksgiving and praise of the name of God because of all that He created. When you think, when you see the little children that we have in here, Declan, who's only four days old, or Audrey that's three years old, or Caden who's, who's almost, a, about a year now, right? A little more than a year. I can't remember now when they all have them, right? Am I wrong? Ten months. Almost a year. And Tamar who's two, right? 
And you see, look at, you look at them and you go, what amazing God we have. He loves you. In the message, the translation of the message, listen to how they translate this passage of Scripture, Psalm 100. It says, On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourself into His presence. Know this, God is God. And God, God, He made us. He did, he didn't, he, we didn't make Him. We're His people. His well-tended sheep. Enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourself at home. Take talking praise. Thanking Him. Worship Him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty. All generous in love. Loyal always and ever. Oh, you know, we must give our praise and worship and spirit of spiritual worship to God. Worship that is all about Him. Worship that is not about us. And out of this spiritual worship comes one very important result found in one more psalm I would like us to look at this morning. It is Psalm 105, verse 1 through 4. It says this, Give thanks to Yahweh, call on His name, proclaim His deeds among the peoples, sing to Him, sing praises, praise to Him, tell about all His wonder, wonderful works, honor His holy name, let the hearts of those who seek Yahweh rejoice, search for the, for, for the Lord and, and for His strength. Seek his face always. We find here that it is worship of God that people, that the, pe- the worship of God's people should go out to all the world. It says in that passage, in the very first verse, it says, Give thanks to Yahweh, call on his name, proclaim his deeds among the peoples. Our worship, part of our worship, is that we go out from here into the world and, and continue in that worship by proclaiming who God is to the world. It shouldn't be a guess who our God is. It shouldn't be just a, something that happens on Sunday and ends at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Worship of God should go out from here to all those we know and encounter each week. Worship of God should be out. It should, they should know the deeds of, of, of God in our lives. It must go out to the people of the world. Spiritual worship must be a witness to the might, should be must be to to be a witness to the mighty works of God in our lives, and when God's people worship, the lives of those seeking Him, of seeking God, should be changed. What this tells me is that seekers that seekers are not looking for service about themselves or about that's focused on them. When a seeker comes to a worship in in God's house, a seeker should see, hear about the mighty works of God in His people through the song, through the message. Through, the, through prayer, through our offering, the giving of our tithes and our offering. As we proclaim who He is and what He has done in our lives, let the world know what God has done in your life. In the message again, it says, Hallelujah, thank God, pray to Him by name. Tell, every, tell everyone you, you meet what He has done. Sing him songs, belt out, out hymns, translate his wonders into music, honor his holy name with hallelujahs, you who seek God. Live a happy life. Keep your eyes open for God. Watch for his works. Be alert for his signs of his presence. What a great translation this is. Our worship should be, should be because of all we see that God is doing in our lives and in the world around us. And one final thing. That is important for you to understand about spiritual worship is found in Psalm 15. The New Living Translation translates it this way. Who may worship in the sanctuary of the Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. Speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors. Or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend men money without charge, charging interest, and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. This is what spiritual worship is. When you look at that passage of Scripture, when you consider what, what we should be like when we come into this place. 
The people of God, when they present themselves as living sacrifices, are not gossipers. They're not there to hurt the innocent. They're not there to, to consider themselves. It's about coming before God and asking God to clean their lives. It's coming before God and saying, Lord, it's about you, not about me. Spiritual worship is about who he is and what he's done for us. For his love endures forever. He loves you with an undying love. So much that he was willing to give his son for you. This is who we come to worship on Sunday morning. This is who we worship when we go out, out of this place after 12 o'clock on Sunday morning. This is who our God is. Spiritual worship. I would encourage us to for, move for, towards that. Try to find a way as you come into here to, to think and meditate on who God is in your life and what he's done for you. Allow him to move in your heart. I hope that this helps you to, to, to get your focus on him this morning and the weeks to come. Thank you.